Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the potentate king, the one who reigns and rules. This is your Apostle Reddick, and I am bringing the message today on tithes and offerings. Three. Tithe and offering three. Tithe and offering three. And I want you to understand that this message is to empower you. All the messages on tithes and offerings, they are to empower you and to give you understanding of why God placed the ordinances of tithing and offering. So we have been learning on tithes and offerings for two weeks now. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, I pray that your word is received today. I pray that you would watch over and protect. Open up the ears and eyes of the hearers, giving them understanding to hear you, Lord. To hear what Christ is saying to the church by the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of the living God, your Spirit. And so I pray that in tithes and offerings, you will be glorified and honored. In tithes and offerings, your people will be perfected and edified. That by tithes and offerings, they understand that you move in it. And that there will be treasures, plenty of blessings in the treasures of your house, in the storehouses, God, of your kingdom. Be glorified through the message. Bring deliverance and healing. Enlightenment and faith. Empowering your people so that Satan can't come and say, Did God say? And they can say instead of Eve, Yes, he did say. Have your way in the hearers. And as I yield my spirit, my myself, my person to you, Lord, have mercy. I bind the spirits that be. As I yield to your Holy Ghost, I bind every spirit that's not like you. And I cut them down right now in the name of Jesus that will pervert the message that, were, that will interrupt and intercede in the wrong manner in the name of Christ Amen and Amen Malachi the third chapter Malachi the third chapter The 6th through the 12th verse. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. You know, we hear the saying that God is the Lord and he changes not. In this verse we see the mercy of God coming forth. And it is because he changes not, we as a people are not consumed. 
as you begin to hear this message, I want you to think about verse 6. Let's go on, verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinances. From the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord. Not, not the Holy Spirit. Saith the Lord of hosts, neither is that one. But ye said, Wherein shall we return? Wherein shall we return? Listen to what he's saying. Now remember he's saying, I change not. Therefore, ye sons and daughters of Jacob are not consumed. You are not consumed. For even from the days of your father, you are going away from my name or from mine ordinances and have not kept them. He's saying, return to me. Return. And I will return to you. Evidently, when you walk away from God, God stops seeing, hearing you. He says, return to me and I will return to you. Just like he said, if you seek me, you will find me. Why is God telling us constantly through the scriptures for those who have gone away to return unto me that I might return unto you? What is going on today that God would impress that in my spirit that we need to return to him? Wherein shall we return? But you said, Wherein shall we return? And here God says, I will return to you if you return to me. But then you say to him, Wherein shall we return? Like you, y'all were lost. This is what the children of Israel say to God. Is this what we say to God today? I don't think I'm lost. So why should I return? I'm not, I'm right here. I'm not doing anything. I come to church. He says, will a man rob God? This is his response. Well, where shall I return? I'm not doing nothing wrong. Well, are you robbing God? Who are you robbing? If you rob one of his servants, you're robbing him. Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, whereunto have I robbed thee? And he said, in tithes and offering. In tithes and offering. Will you return to God in tithes and offering? In a place that is dark in your life. Is he shining light today? Will you return to God in tithes and offerings? He's shedding light today. In a dark place. Where you rob. Where you rob. And I'm going to pause right there and go through some of the information in the, the first three verses. He says, you have gone away from my ordinances. And what are ordinances but precepts and rules which must be strictly obeyed? Even in Christ, in the New Testament, we have where they still are when Christ is alive 
practicing the ordinance of giving and tithes and offerings. And there is a woman. The woman is saying, the woman, she gives a mite. And this woman is giving all that she had. And this other, this these these rich men are giving what they had. They're giving out. So tithing is being practiced even while Christ is alive. When you go further into the Gospels and into the, the book of the Acts and the letters to the church, tithing and offering is addressed. So this ordinance has not changed. God has not changed that. So what are these precepts and rules? Precepts are the teachings of God. The rules are the laws. Let's go to Acts, the seventh chapter. Acts, the seventh chapter, the 51st verse. He says, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. That means you're blinded in the spiritual hearing and understanding. Your eyes of enlightenment are blind. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. Now why is it that y'all resist the Holy Ghost? As your fathers did, so do you. He says, which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them which showed before of the coming of the just one. Y'all persecuted the prophets because they were showing the revelation of the coming Messiah, the just one, Christ, whom y'all crucified, but on the third day, God raised him from the dead. Why is it that when the, the true prophets are giving up for truth, uh, here comes the persecution? They are resisting the Holy Ghost. Of whom you have been now the betrayers and murderers. Who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. He's saying, listen, angels, the messengers of God, have delivered them to you. They delivered them to you the law. And what is the law but the ordinances of God? It is the rules in which you are governed. You do resist the Holy Ghost and tithe and offering. You resist the prophets who prophesied of the just one, the Messiah in whom the Bible is calling them betrayers and murderers. But they, they are like their fathers. So we have the laws that are the ordinance of God. And they have not kept. The tithe and offering. Ordinance of God. I want to, I there's another definition to ordinance, but I want to stay right here. They have not kept him. Let's go to Zechariah. Let's go to Zechariah. One.
Zechariah 1, 2 through 5. The Lord hath been sore displeased with your fathers. Therefore say thou unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, And I will turn unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. Be ye not as your fathers, Unto whom the former prophets have cried, Saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Turn ye now from your evil ways, And from your evil doings. But they did not hear, Nor hearken unto me, saith the Lord. And this is why Stephen called them stiff-necked. Your fathers where are they and the prophets do they live forever where are your fathers where are the prophets they're not the ones that live forever you're talking to the ancient of days the holy one but my words and my statutes which i command my servants the prophets did they not take hold of your fathers and they returned and said, Like as the Lord of hosts thought to do unto us according to our ways and according to our doings, so hath he dealt with us. Here we are. I want you to understand. We're talking to God. In Malachi, God is talking to the sons of Jacob. He's talking to Israel. And he's saying, return. And you, we have conversation with God. And he's looking at us and we're asking him questions and he's asking us questions. And he's telling us today... You have robbed me. He's telling me if you return to me in an area of your life, I will return to you. If you don't know what that area is, you've got to have a conversation with God. He says, verse 3, Turn you unto me, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will turn unto you. But Jacob, sons had issues they didn't know what their problem was and no matter how plain God put it they would not hearken unto his voice they would not return to him he says turn from your evil ways and from your evil doings evil ways and evil doings you would think that's the same thing to me as I study the word of God. But evil ways, how you live. Evil doings, the actions towards others and maybe yourself. You have to put them away. And so I want you to understand that God is saying, turn unto me, and I will return unto you. That's important. If I had a subtitle, that's what I would title it. We've got to return to God. We've got to return. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi, the first chapter, the sixth verse. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If 
then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests. That despise my name. And you say, wherein have, ye, have we despised thy name? God is having conversation here. Maybe they didn't really know they were lost in despising his name. He says, you offered polluted bread upon mine altar. And you say, wherein have we polluted you? And that you say, the table of the Lord is contemptible. Why offer anything? This is about tithes and offerings. If you can't offer it the way the person is supposed to accept it, they reject it. Even God does it. He says, listen, if I be a father to you, where is my honor? You want to give me things the way you want to give them. From your heart is not truly from your heart. It is sin at your door. A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If I be a father, where is mine honor? If I be a master, where is my fear? Saith the Lord of hosts unto you, O priests, that despise my name. But they're asking a question like they don't despise him. But you're not following my ordinances. You're offering to me things like Cain. Sin was at Cain's door. Remember the teaching from Tithes and Offerings 1? The priests that despise my name, and you say, wherein have we despised your name? What are you offering God? What is he saying in response to you? Is he asking you a question? Now it says priests. And we know in the Old Testament it talks about false shepherds. There are some priests in the house of God that need to return to him. You know I got this prayer going on. I feel like it's a sign to me to break the covering that's not of God off some leaders sometimes. But it's not just the priests. It is the priests, but also the people. Because in the New Testament, Christ has made us priests. But we're looking to our leadership because we follow the leadership. And if the leaders is robbing God's and tithes and offering, so are the people. You have your few exceptions. They will not follow the leader. And I'm going to tell you, and if you, as long as you don't follow your leader in robbing God, the Agaia, <laughs> I love this saying by the Apostle Paul. He said, he told his disciples for when he was teaching them about Christ, he says, follow me as I follow Christ. They knew if the Apostle Paul was doing something outside of the will of God, not to follow them. If, they were, if he was sacrificing unto idols, they knew not to follow him. If they were not tithing, they knew not to follow him if he wasn't tithing. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. If you're robbing God, then your people will begin to rob God. And see, you're the head priest as they are discipling priests. Now I need the priests, the pastors, the heads to examine their lives. Is God talking to you? Are 
you paying your tithes and offerings? Or are you robbing God? Or is he saying to you in Malachi, what are you offering me? Is it polluted bread? What's coming out of your mouth? What are you feeding me as your father? Is there honor in it? He says, you offer polluted bread upon my altar. And then you've got a nerve to ask me, where have I polluted it? He says, and if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor, will he be pleased? Wait a minute, he's saying, listen, offer to your governor what you have that you respect and bring it to your home. Give him the lame, give him the polluted meat. But you will dishonor me in my house. You will rob me of tithes and offerings. But you won't do it to the man you can see. Jesus had more respect for government than that. Than you have for him. He said, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. And unto God what belongs to God. But you want to shortcut God. Will he be pleased, the governor, will he be pleased with you or accept your person? But you want to offer it unto me. If I be a father, where is mine honor? Return from robbing God. God in this verse, in verse 7, let's go Malachi. 3 verse 7 verse 8 he says verse 8 we're in verse 8 now will a man let's wait a minute I don't want to I don't want to go that far yet I have to back up a little bit I gotta finish with ordinances ordinances also mean a privilege or a due so wait a minute so first of all, let me get this straight, God. I'm not following you in your rules and laws. I'm resisting the Holy Ghost. I have not kept them. I'm dishonoring you. Not just in rules, but in privileges that are due me. How do you dishonor God in a privilege? He assigned you a task. How do you dishonor him in it? He counted you worthy. Trustworthy. Let's go to Leviticus, the 24th chapter. It's a privilege and an honor to serve the Lord. And yet, you're robbing him in that. Leviticus 24. Leviticus 24, verse 9. He says, And it shall be Aaron's and his sons, and they shall eat in the holy place. See, God has assigned Aaron and his sons to the holy place. And this is the most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire by a perpetual statute. He has assigned this to you. It's going on forever and ever. For it is the most holy unto him of the offerings of the Lord made by fire. This is a covenant. 
let's go back up. The show bread. The shoe bread. And thou shalt take fine flour and bake twelve cakes thereof. Two tenth deals shall be in one cake. And thou shalt set them in two rows, six in a row, upon the pure table of the Lord. And thou shalt put pure frankincense upon each row, that it may be on the bread for a memorial and an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And he assigned it. It is a privilege due to Aaron and his sons in the priest's office. How are you handling the things that are still to be offered to God in the priest's office? Are you <laughs> dishonoring what you're offering as priests to God? We offer him the sacrifice of praise. We present our bodies a living sacrifice. We handle the thing, the vessels that belong to God. How are we dealing with them? Is it dishonoring God? I can't answer that for you. I can only answer for myself. How are you handling? Aaron and his sons in the priest's office. It's a holy place that offered to God. And he's saying it's a privilege. This is an ordinance that I'm giving to you. It's a privilege for you to work for me. When I assign you to something, it is a privilege. Are you dishonoring me and your privilege and your ordinance? Let's go to Malachi chapter 3 verse 8. He says, will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? He said, in tithes and offerings. He says, you are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Now here he took it outside of just the nation. What about America? Are we tithing in America as a nation? Israel was a nation. Twelve tribes. Are you robbing God in tithes and offering? As a nation, are we robbing God? Are we doing our due? Are we doing our due? I want to talk about that for a moment. I want to talk about God's name. Because he said, will a man rob God? So let's understand his name in this verse, verse 8. This is important. Will you rob me in tithes and offerings? So what does God, what is what, what name is he going by here? In robbing him. It just looked like plainly he's talking about God, and we just know we know it's our Heavenly Father. But let's go deeper because we need to understand what he's saying. He says that God here, the word God, as it is capitalized, we know him by his divine title, Elohim. means God that is his name and we're not talking about because that name is given to many gods but we're talking about the creator and maker Elohim is his name and so in this particular scripture in Malachi 3 8 we're calling on Elohim he says will a man rob Elohim Will you rob the creator and maker? Go with me to Psalm 7. He is 
is distinctively setting himself apart as to what God you are robbing. Elohim. You're robbing Elohim. Let's see what this name means here in these verses. Seven, Psalm 7 verse 9. Oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just. For the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. Uh, here we have in Malachi. The third chapter, the eighth verse, is the same God in Psalm 7 verse 9. He is the righteous God that tries the reins and the hearts. Uh, he is looking at me and is saying, will you return unto me so that I can return to you? I am Elohim. I am the righteous God. Let's look at him again. 1 Samuel, the 17th chapter. The same God in Psalm 7 is the same God in, in Malachi 3, verse 8. 1 Samuel. First Samuel seventeen twenty six. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? And take away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine? That he should defy the armies of the living God. Here God is putting a reference to who he is. He is not any G-O-D God. He is Elohim. He is righteous and he is living. And who shall stand against the armies of the Lord? What shall be done for the man who deals with the uncircumcised Philistines who think they can handle the armies of the Lord any way they want? He says, I'm the righteous God. I am the living God. He is identifying what God y'all are robbing. There are different deities of gods in this Bible. But he is standing out and he is letting you know, I am the Elohim, the righteous one, the living one. Now let's go to Joshua, the 24th chapter. Joshua, the 24th chapter, the 19th verse. And Joshua said unto the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a holy God. He is a, a jealous God. Hold on. Here we have uncircumcised Philistines coming against the army of the living God. He is a righteous God. Now he's letting you know, I'm the holy God and I am jealous. I'm a jealous God. And he said, will you return to me? Return. This is the God that you're robbing. I need you to examine your life. Are you robbing God? If you forsake the Lord and serve strange gods, then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he have done you good. See, he said, I did you good. But you turned from me, so I turned from you. And when I turned from you, hurt came upon you and consumed you. And the people. 
people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. And Joshua said unto the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen you, the Lord, to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And the people said unto Joshua, The Lord our God will we serve, and his voice will we obey. Are you saying that today, church? Are you saying that today? Are we self-examining? Who? What God are we robbing? He said we're robbing the righteous God, the living God, the holy God. That's a jealous God. He said in another scripture, my name is Jealous. We, we just looked at the ordinances being in a being holy. It's in the holy place that the priests offer up. We serve and we offer to a holy God. You got to know the God you serve. Ask yourself, am I robbing God? One more, one more description that belongs to the God of Malachi. Second Chronicles 15. Now, for a long season, Israel have been without the true God. See, that's what he tell you. When you serving these other gods, you without me. I want you to understand that he's saying, you are without me. Will you return so that I can return to you? Now for a long season, They've been without the true God and without a teaching priest and without the law. But when they are in trouble, they do turn unto the Lord God of Israel and saw him and he was found of them. What God are you seeking in the time of trouble? Is it the true God? Because that's what's here. In 2 Chronicles, we find that Elohim is the true God. What God do you serve today? He said, listen to the, listen. We are the church. We are the church. And it is the children of Israel. Or those that walk in Judaism. They're Jews that believe that the Messiah was Christ that came. That Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. The one that raised from the dead, the living lamb. So we must understand. But this is the God that's speaking to us today. He's the same God that brought in the new covenant through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He's the same God that Jesus said, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. Are you rendering to God today what belongs to him or are you robbing him? Are you returning? He's saying, he's asking in this message of tithes and offering, are you returning? He's saying, return unto me. Are you going to return? He says, I want to return to you. I want to return to you. I 
am Elohim, your creator and your maker. I am the righteous God, the living God, the holy God, the jealous God, and the true God. Are you going to return to me? I need you to self-examine. Nehemiah, the 13th chapter. Well, no, let's go back to Malachi. We're talking about tithes and offerings. Malachi 3, verse 10. He says, bring you all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. My time is coming nigh. And I have so much more on this message. So I will be teaching it again next week. Finishing out ties and all. But I, I just Verses 6 through 9 I want you to understand The God that's speaking to you It is the holy God It is the true God It is the jealous God The living God The righteous God Elohim is his name He said, will you return? I need you to stop robbing me. I need you to return unto me. I need you to understand that my ordinances are not just rules and regulations, but they're privileges so that you can work in mine office. And see, I can't get into all that right now. That's another part of the message. But I want you to know, if I be a father, where is my honor? I need the priest to return. I need every priest to examine themselves. Whether you're the chief shepherd, the bishop, the senior pastor, or whether you are the discipling priests, the assistant pastors, the ministers, the evangelists, those that are coming up into the priest office. If you're giving of your tithes and offerings, you may not be robbing God in that area. I need you to look into the areas of your life. Uh, are you robbing him of his sacrifices of praise? Are you robbing him of your life being a living sacrifice? Are you rendering unto God what belongs to Elohim even as you're rendering unto Caesar what belongs to him, the governor? the ruler I want you to understand that God loves you today and he needs you to render unto him what belongs to him he needs you to return to him return return to the holy one return Return to the Holy One. He's a holy Lord. He's holy and righteous is his name. He's the living God. He's not like all these other G.O.D. gods. He said, I'm not talking about them today. I'm talking about me. And I must identify myself with you. I am the holy God. I am the righteous God. I am the living God. I am the true God. And I'm a jealous God.
I need you to return. I need you to return. Return from robbing me. Robbing me of your praise. Robbing me of your worship. Robbing me of the tithes and the offerings. Robbing me of the sacrifices. Robbing me in the office where I've given you privilege. God loves you. And I love you. I would not preach what thus saith the Lord. If the agape of Christ wasn't in me. If the... <laughs> I have to give you the truth. God's word is truth. Uh, Jesus Christ is truth. Um, God is the true God. And he wants to know today, will you return? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your word. I thank you for your, for your love. I thank you for this message on robbing you, on returning from robbing you, God. On returning, you said if we return to you, you will return to us. You have opened up the doorway to the sheepfold. For those that have left, it is time to return. For those that are standing in the privileged office who have been robbing God in their privilege. It's time to return. It's time to return for those who have been not sacrificing the, the praise that's to his name. That are not giving their bodies a living sacrifice unto the Lord. What are you offering? It's time for return. Father, I thank you for the return. I thank you, God, for those that are returning to you. Uh, that are returning so that you can return to them. I thank you, Father, in this hour that you are breaking the spirit of Egypt and Pharaoh off the backs of, of the believers and people who have gone astray. I thank you for those who are accepting the call to return back to him, that he will return to them. And I thank you for this message as we self-examine and see where we need to return to you. Not according to man's words or to his opinion, but according to you. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Elohim. Have your way, Holy Spirit continue to move in the lives of the people let them know they need you more and more i need you more lord we need you more lord hallelujah 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 we thank you father we glorify your name and we do return have your way god we need you in our lives return to us as we return to you in jesus name Amen and amen. amen.